I got a fun video planned today and I'm gonna test and see if stabilizers make any difference on a recurve bow. I'm gonna shoot at 70 meters. I have a camera down there so you'll be able to see the impact points the entire time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a recurve stabilizer setup here that is traditionally shot at the Olympic Games with V-bars and an extension and a long rod. And then I'm gonna take them off completely and shoot the bow just bare and see how big of a difference it makes in my groups downrange. So this is something that I just wanted to try and see if there was any sort of difference in actual groups and my aiming pattern here at 70 meters. Normally when people are just putting on stabilizers for the first time, they're gonna be shooting much closer distances like 18 meters at the very most, generally speaking, or 20 yards. But to really highlight how much of a difference this does make, I decided to stretch it out to the Olympic distance, which is 70 meters. And I'm gonna shoot a couple of ends of each setup in alternating fashion. So that way, hopefully there's no bias in regards to how much energy I have. All of these are ramrod stabilizers. This is the vector stabilizer itself. It's got the tungsten dampening weights and everything on it. So it's a very high end recurve stabilizer system that you would see many professionals shooting. And then I'm gonna take the entire system off all the way down to the bare bow to the actual riser itself, but leave the sight on it and then shoot it and see how it goes and then alternate back and forth. If you're interested in any of the equipment that I'm using in this video, including these ramrod stabilizers, I will have links in the description below. And please, if you do any shopping, click those links first. Genuinely, it helps this channel out because those are affiliate links. Like I said, I've already sighted in and I've already warmed up. So I'm ready to go here and I'm just gonna get right to it. Basically what I'm seeing with my sight picture so far is very, very little movement, if at all. If I had a sight pin with a dot in the middle, the dot definitely would not be leaving the yellow. Um, you know, I would say it's probably 50 plus percent of the time in the 10 ring. So it'll be really interesting to see when I make mistakes just like that one, how much of a difference, if at all, the stabilizers are making. Because that one wasn't very good, and uh, definitely you could see why the arrow hit up there. And uh, like the previous shot, not the greatest. So on this end, I shot a 53 out of 60. Scored may not matter a whole lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an arrow and I'm gonna measure the group spread left to right, up to down, and kind of notate it on the target. Just that way I can kind of see what the actual group is doing. Because when I take the stabilizers off, my arrows may not land in the same place. I suspect they may shift slightly on the target as far as the impact point, only because I know that when you change stabilizer setups, it can really affect the tune of the arrow and therefore affect its trajectory. And so it might impact slightly different. So we can't necessarily compare scores in regards to like apples to apples type comparison here. So I'm gonna measure the group spread and note it that way in case it changes a lot. So I'm gonna go down and get them, take the stabilizers off and do this again. So I also suspect that the bow will get dramatically louder. I haven't shot a recurve at all without a stabilizer system on it, other than maybe occasionally with a very, very light recurve bow that shoots maybe like, I don't know, 12 pounds of draw weight or so. And uh, 
and this thing is right at probably 46 between 44 and 46 if I had to guess I haven't actually measured the peak draw weight and uh, it'll be really interesting I'm sure it's gonna be super loud like I said I'm sure it's gonna aim terribly and uh, the bow is gonna be very unruly when I let it go it's gonna kind of just swing all over the place and the top limb may turn back and want to hit me in the top of the head so we'll see what happens I honestly have no idea how the bow is gonna react and uh, it's mildly terrifying only because of the amount of draw weight I'm shooting. Okay, so now that I have a kid's toy in my hand, which is not substantial at all and not balanced at all, let's see what happens. So the bow, and I saw the arrow move way left. Uh, the bow, the way it aims, it's very jittery. The sight pin is still mostly in the gold the whole time, if I had to say, but it's like just jittery and really just wobbly because there's no stabilizers taking out my shaking that I'm doing. And uh, yeah, I hit a five way to the left. And I'm shooting these arrows as good as I possibly can. Bow definitely is not as loud as I was expecting. And an eight left. So based on that, it looks like the group has definitely just shifted to the left, but it's still grouping roughly the same. The vertical height is the same. Well, better actually, but it's only three arrows. And the left to right spread is pretty similar actually. bow just reacts so stupidly. So far four shots that were pretty good. I wouldn't say that really any of them were bad. It's interesting, there's two distinct groups down there right now. I think definitely um, it's interesting because of the way the sight's moving, it's kind of forcing me to ignore it more, which is a good thing, actually. You shouldn't be paying attention to the sight very much. Uh, if you're interested in learning how I aim, I'll actually put a link in the description below and a card at the top up there to a video uh, I did on how I aim a bow and how I believe you should aim. But anyway, um, the bow, because of that, it's making me just kind of ignore the sight, shoot good shots regardless, which is a good thing. So... Uh, that last one wasn't the greatest shot, and it went further to the left than the rest. Um, but I don't have an answer as to why there's essentially two distinct groups down there. It was definitely better vertically by probably 50%, and I would say the spread left to right is definitely worse because there's no centralized group. I have two distinct groups, and if it was centered on the target, I would say I would probably have three nines, two eights and possibly a seven down there. Uh, I wouldn't have really much anything better than that if the group itself was just centered on the target. And the end previous, I shot a 53. So if this was centered on the target, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a 50 at best. Whereas if I were to centered the group of the previous shot end, I would have had at least a 54, if not higher. Uh, so definitely a big difference there. So. I'm gonna go get them, move the camera to a different position so you can get a better vantage point as to what the bow is doing when I let it go and uh, do this test again. So when I measured the group spread, it was better than 50% smaller vertically and it was uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20%-ish wider. So overall, definitely, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's much different overall. It's just very odd how it was uh, just a horizontal spread and almost no vertical spread. Let's see what happens. Such a total different feel the way it shoots. Because obviously there's more mass weight, I have to actually hold the bow up when I'm aiming.
like that. The last one wasn't the greatest because it was a little quick. Obviously, it still went near the middle. And the one before wasn't the greatest either, but it still went in the middle. So it is, uh, yeah, just to note that the last end, when I shot one not so good, it moved a lot. Okay, so that one's a 57 vertical group. Pretty similar. The left to right group's definitely dramatically better on that end. So I'll go down and mark them again, and uh, then we'll come back, take the stabilizers off, do it one more time, and see if we have similar, similar results. This definitely, as far as the stabilizers are concerned, the inner group is definitely there. As of the last end, there was no inner group or no, no overall concentric group without the stabilizers. So we'll see if that holds up again or not. All right, second end with no stabilizers. Definitely a lot louder. It's just sharper. That one felt odd. The arrow or the the arm, the bow arm, wanted to move left upon release. I didn't throw it left, but it really moved left. Uh, so maybe shooting without stabilizers might even be some sort of a training game or tool to realize what you're doing in your form. Definitely hard to shoot this way. It was a decent shot on that one, not, not that bad. A little longer on the timing, but the execution was still good. Now I know this isn't a fair comparison uh, because of the, ch the tune changing. I mentioned that earlier, that uh, as you change stabilizer systems, it changes the tune of the bow which can change the flight of the arrow and change the forgiveness. I really truly don't believe that the tune of the bow has changed that much to make that much of a difference in the actual grouping. Because the grouping is, now that you can see, like especially compare and contrast last end, even the first end with the stabilizers compared to this end, you can see a huge difference. There's just really no comparison there. And I would say, you know, based on now looking at it for two ends, that left eight is the center of the group that I've been shooting without the stabilizers. And like I said, if I center that, I would probably have two tens, a nine, an eight, maybe another nine, maybe another eight, and then a definitely a seven or a six. So that would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 52 at best out of 60. So like I said, 52 and maybe a 50 at best, the end previous, even if I would have centered those left eights and then the left sixes and that four, the distance there would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of three tens and three sevens or two sevens and a six. At three sevens, that's a 51. So that still is not good. The scores there are just not good. Not in comparison with stabilizers. The stabilizers genuinely made a huge difference in my little fun quick test here of just shooting a couple ends in each. Like I said, I've not shot a recurve bow without a stabilizer system and like a real stabilizer ever actually. Uh, the first time I started shooting recurve, I had a long rod on just a long rod, no V-bars. I had a long rod and a back weight, just like Butch, Butch Johnson did back in the day, because uh, that's what everybody was shooting. People hadn't shot V-bars really that much back then. This was in like 
2000 is when I started shooting recurve, give or take. And V-bars just really weren't a thing, not very popular, at least from where I was from uh, back then. So huge difference, though, in the actual aiming pattern, huge difference in the overall stability. I don't have my Mantis here. It's packed away somewhere. Otherwise, I would have thrown it on the bow so I could give you actual stability ratings. But I can tell you that the when the shot went well, the actual aiming property, the pin was roughly as steady as far as how big of a movement it was making. But without the stabilizers, it was literally like just all over the place like this, just moving all over the place. Whereas with the stabilizers, it would sit, maybe go like this and come back, maybe go up and come back and, you know, just kind of wander maybe a little bit, but it was basically sitting in the middle the entire time and not this just constant wavering. You know, Joel Turner has talked about potentially needing a lighter stabilizer system that's not so steady because when the stabilizer moves out, its first move is gonna go back to the center. If you're doing your job aiming correctly, in the correct manner because of you know the human hand-eye coordination is so incredible especially when it comes to subconscious shooting when you shoot a lot a lot of arrows and you've trained the overall motor skills like i have now will stabilizers or not stabilizers show the same difference for you probably not because i've shot you know probably going on a million arrows by now with a version of a technique that i've been trying to perfect the entire time and so I've got a lot of arrows under my belt developing this form and this technique and the overall motor control, the proprioception, the connection between the brain and the muscles to do its job as best and as efficient as humanly possible. So, you know, the actual aiming pattern is still pretty good. But if you don't have those skills developed yet, I really truly think as long as stabilizers are not too heavy for you, then they will make a huge difference. Even just a very basic stabilizer setup. You don't have to get a high-end one like these here. You can get a basic stabilizer set with minimal weights, like an ounce or two on each stabilizer. Or if you're a kid or you have a kid and you're looking to hook them up with a set of stabilizers, just setting them up with a stabilizer with no weight on it to start is a great thing. And I think it starts to make a difference and eventually they're gonna head that direction anyway, unless they're shooting barebow. Obviously you can't shoot a stabilizer in that class. I think genuinely this was a very fun video to make. I've not shot a recurve without a stabilizer unless it was about 10 pounds. So to feel the difference and go back and forth between stabilizers, no stabilizers, to see the aiming pattern change dramatically and to see the group shift to the left a dramatic amount is actually kind of cool. I think that is probably tune related, the impact shift, but the actual groups, definitely way more to it than just the actual tune. Hey, if you like this video, consider sharing it. Genuinely, that really helps this channel out and hit that subscription button and the notification bell down below. I don't operate any other social media, so I rely on you to help spread the word about the channel. So sharing it genuinely makes a difference. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please do consider supporting the channel. There's many different links in the description below and various different ways that you can actually support this channel. I can't thank my supporters enough. I produce all this content for archers around the world to enjoy for free. And so I couldn't do it without you, at least not to this level.